It's pretty incredible the capabilities cameras have these days. Every time a new camera gets released, there are bigger resolutions, higher frame rates, and less compressed recording formats. All these are incredible features to have available at increasingly more affordable price points. The issue comes when you realize how quickly these file sizes add up. Over a year ago, I purchased the Red Komodo and started shooting a lot of projects in 6K RAW or at the very minimum in ProRes, which are still fairly large file sizes. This opened up a whole new world to me when it came to the overall image and flexibility and color grading. It also challenged the storage solutions I had been using for years. Previously, I had been editing on an external SSD and then transferring old projects to two mirrored external 16 terabyte HHDs, which I had hooked up to my computer. These would sit on my desk for me to make revisions or recall old projects if needed. When these would get full, I would transfer the oldest projects to archive drives that would then sit in my closet if I ever needed them. This was a fairly cheap solution and worked decently up until getting the Komodo. There are a few issues that came up. First, the projects I was working on began to be so big that I would regularly have to transfer projects from my 16 terabyte HHDs to the archive drives. 16 terabytes was, was not a lot anymore. I used to be able to have you know six months to a year of projects stored on them before archiving those projects. Now it would be maybe three months. I would have to keep pulling my archive drives out just to make late stage revisions to a client project. My solution was to buy a hard drive enclosure where I would run four 16 terabyte HHDs and that helped me fix my project backlog problem. The second issue was that I was editing off a one terabyte SSD. This worked great when I was shooting H.264, but now that wasn't even big enough to hold a single project in some cases. So I bought a two terabyte SSD and then another one. Most of the projects I was working on fit within that two terabyte cap, and I just ran my active projects across those three drives. This wasn't a perfect solution, but it did the job at the time. The third issue came when I started expanding our team and I also joined a marketing agency on top of running my business. There's also another business that I kind of have a hand in running as well. So managing those three uh, provided some issues. So there were so many projects to manage and making sure the right projects were on the right drives was a nightmare. Throw into the mix that, you know, working on a larger scale team at the agency showed how, you know, hard this system was for collaboration. I needed a better solution, so I started researching. I needed a fairly specific criteria met. The first being large volume of storage. So I wanted at least, you know, a 50 terabyte starting point. I also wanted local data redundancy, expandable storage for the future and for growth, the ability to edit directly off of the storage solution um, from at least two locations the ability to host data under one roof, but at the same time have separation so that I could manage files for three separate businesses. I wanted multiple people to be able to access the data and edit at the same time. The ability to back up data to the cloud and have contractors or clients upload files to the cloud service um, that integrates with the local storage so that any uploading slash downloading on our end is completely automated. At the time, I had no idea if a solution like this even existed. I knew a friend of mine who had a NAS for his company, but I didn't have a lot of experience using it. After a little research, I discovered that it was probably the route to go, but I had to look even deeper to make sure that the specific NAS I bought could actually handle all of the demands I had for it. I settled on the QNAP TS932PX. From a hardware standpoint, this ticked the boxes that I needed while being a pretty reasonable budget, uh, coming in around 1280 Canadian. It has two 10 gigabyte SFP ports, uh, which could be adapted to 10 gigabyte ethernet. It also has five 3.5 inch SATA slots, um, so I could do around 50 terabytes um, of NAS approved HHDs. It also has an additional four 2.5 inch ports for SSDs, and the QTS software also allows me to accomplish the customization I was looking for from a software level. Here's how I was able to use this device to tick all the boxes that I previously mentioned. First, this NAS enabled me to have over 50 terabytes of archive storage that can easily be accessed at any point. 
QTS allows you to set up your hard drives in RAID configurations, which allows you to hold a backup of your files without having to dedicate half of your storage space to that. I chose to go with a RAID 5 configuration, which approximately uses 20% of the storage pool for your backups. QNAP also sells expansion units that you can use to grow your storage in the future. When my current enclosure gets low, I will likely buy a 16 bay expansion unit and then just keep adding drives as needed. This means that I will always have access to all my projects and data whenever I need it. No matter how old a project is, I will always have it readily accessible. Working at an agency downtown as well as from home provided a challenge when it came to network storage. I created a great system for my home office, but I still need to use external SSDs when working on agency projects. This not only wasn't a good term solution for the agency, it also made collaboration internally really difficult and video projects would, when we would archive them, would get stored on Google Drive, which is just a pain in the ass if we ever wanted to access them again. We ended up getting a NAS for the agency office as well. This set them up with a better video storage solution for the future and made the hybrid work from home slash from the office much more seamless. I simply set up a two-way sync between my NAS at home and the NAS at the office, using only agency-specific folders to make sure that you know none of my personal data or the data from any of my other businesses would make it onto the NAS downtown. Managing data for three separate companies is not easy. There's a lot of files that you want shared and some that you never want touching each other. Um, you may have you know, presets available to multiple team members that you want, but you probably don't want any of your financials touching at all. Um, and luckily, there are rules that you can set up using QTS around this. You can select what folders you want shared between uh, different NASs, which ones you want uploaded or synced uh, to different cloud services. You can also select uh, user permissions. This is what made the whole setup possible. Team members at the agency I work with only have permissions to that NAS. They cannot access anything from my home setup. My editor can only access files from the two companies that I oversee. I can access everything on both sides. Our wedding contractors cannot access the NAS, but they can access everything through Dropbox remotely. And I can deploy an incredibly custom approach for my unique situation and can easily change it over time as well. I was able to set up a NAS for local editing using a combination of cache storage and 10 gigabyte networking. In addition to the NAS enclosure, I also purchased a 10 gigabyte network switch, which allowed me to create a local network. I ran internet cabling from my modem upstairs to the network switch in my studio. The NAS was also connected to the switch using short runs of CAT 6A cables. You need CAT 6A or higher if you're doing 10 gigabyte runs. From there, I have both me and my editor's workstations hooked up with CAT 6A to the switch. That created a network between all devices. The workstations can directly access the NAS at 10 gigabyte speeds. I can also have a physical connection to the internet. The NAS also is connected to the internet, allowing it to be accessed over Wi-Fi as well as uh, remotely via a VPN. Since my laptop doesn't have an ethernet uh, port, I had to purchase a 10 gigabyte to Thunderbolt adapter. After establishing a 10 gigabyte network, the bottleneck was with the drive speeds. The 50 terabytes of storage is all HHD, which ran about you know six megabytes per second. Luckily, there's an additional four slots uh, for SSDs, which are not as fast as 10 gigabyte, uh, but they are the same speed as the external SSDs that I was editing with previously. QTS allows you to run these SSDs using cache storage. This takes all the manual labor out of transferring active projects to long-term storage. Um, and the most recent and most used files will automatically have a copy stored on those SSDs. So my active projects will automatically be ready to edit off the NAS, no management required. By using the network switch, this fixed the issue of having multiple people access the data at the same time. Both my editor and I can edit projects off the NAS at the exact same time, no need to transfer files or switch hard drives around. The last piece was integrating the NAS with the cloud. QTS comes with an application called Hybrid Backup Sync. 
It is really powerful software that allows you to do exactly that. You can sync your NAS to another NAS or sync it to a cloud service or multiple cloud services, which is perfect. The agency I work with uses Google Drive and my other two businesses I work with use Dropbox. This allows me to back up uh, or sync the agency folders with their existing Google Drive and separately sync my folders for my other two businesses uh, to Dropbox. I definitely prefer Dropbox because of its Finder integration and its syncing feature. I absolutely hate when you're trying to download videos from Google Drive or video files from Google Drive and you have to restart due to a network error or you, you know, have to switch locations and you end up closing your laptop and you lose that connection. For my corporate production company, the local network is great because I have an editor that comes in and can work directly off of the network at the same time as me. But the other company I'm involved with is a wedding kind of photo slash video company. Uh, we have many different contractors that we work with uh, who need to dump footage and who also need to access files to edit with. It isn't realistic for us to have an office where they all come in and edit off of a local network and buying a NAS for each of them uh, just would not be cost effective. So by integrating the NAS with Dropbox, our contractors can easily transfer photos or videos to a shared Dropbox folder in Finder and the assets will just sync in the background anytime that their computer is open and connected to any network. Editors can also sync any folder or files to their hard drive, and those edits will automatically be synced back, uh, not only to Dropbox, but also to my NAS at home. Well, that is essentially how I arrived at buying a NAS myself and a little bit about how it's made its way into my workflow. I'm still learning a lot myself, so if there's anything that seems like a gap, leave a comment. I would love to hear about it. Um, but hopefully you found that helpful and gave you some thoughts about how you can solve some of uh, maybe the storage challenges that you're having. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.